Hi, everyone. There was a lot of technical, deep technical talks here. I will not get into so much details on the WASM, but I will get on how we built and how we made a sec used a secure engine, made it more, much more secure, and to have fast and secure execution on blockchain, where you can move funds, billions of dollars funds, secured by smart contracts. Multiverse 6, late, uh, later known as Aero Network, we just rebranded. We've been in mainnet since 2020, and we've been in mainnet with a WASM VM since then. Uh, we want to try to resolve the blockchain trilemma, which is like scalability, security, decentralization. And I think we managed it. We have network state execution sharding, more than 3,000 transactions per second, uh, two, over 2 million of users, over 400 smart contracts, three, over 3,000 nodes, validators. And they, we have over 100 million of transactions. I don't exactly know the number right now. What we wanted to do, be, to do is to have an internet scale execution. And in order to do that, the first we needed to, to choose a VM in which you can build with common tools and to execute it fast. We didn't want to go to Ethereum style to have interpreters to do EVM, uh, although everybody was doing that. Uh, we found out about Wasm and we liked from the beginning. It was an upscale battle to make it run and to make it always deterministic and to, to scale. But uh, I think we managed it. I think we managed a good job out of that. So basically, in the back end, we use a Wasmer engine. We started with Wasmer 1.0. Before that, we, we tried with VAVM binarian in like 2019. Uh, we make the execution in a complete sandbox, in a com separate thread. Everything the smart contracts needs to access from the blockchain, it's in his separate cache and its separate memory space. So everything, if everything goes wrong, uh, we just crash that thread and the transaction is failed. No state is affected. Everybody is happy. Money is, money is okay. Uh, we had to introduce a few protections for like deterministic builds in all cases. There were some small hiccups here and there. Built in the gas, so you wouldn't have like infinite force inside your smart contract, which would run infinitely inside the transaction. So we put that inside at the time of the compiling, inside the binary, the resolved binary. So you will always, you have a operation counter, and when you are out of counts, out of money you paid it, it, was, it, it just stops, and everything is cached. So from even the smart contracts. Uh, at the first time, we started with like compiling the actual smart contract at every time the transaction was executed. So we started at like 10 transactions per second, or 10 executions, and it, they were small executions, but the wasm was big. So our first smart contracts were, had like over 100 of kilobytes, and they were not doing much job. Uh, but we started to learn. We use Rust for smart contract development and framework for Rust, but by building an SDK, you do not have to know all the bits and details of the Rust. You are doing only business logic. Then after a few months and after like uh, the first crash when everything went down from the fr front-end perspective, because too many users were inside the same application at the same time, uh, we started experimenting with ahead-of-time compilation and warm instances. Ahead-of-time compilation was pretty fast. We kept the, the compiled object as a serialized object, and we needed only to deserialize them before actually running. Warm instances were a bit trickier. It took like over a year to make it happen, because at every moment, we 
thought that we have found a way to do that, and it was fast. It was fast in all the unit tests, on the integration test, everything. And then we, when we started to write malicious codes, everything was breaking down. Worm instances actually, uh, instead of keeping compiled objects in a serialized format, we are, we are keeping in a cache compiled instances of the WASM bytecode, but they are actually compiled. So you do not need to even deserialize. But at every execution, you have to clean everything which the previous execution was, uh, was changing in the state or in the memory of the contract. Then you can re-execute it all. Uh, for this, we had to quite enter quite deep into even single pass compiler and uh, on the Wasmer engine to have everything cleaned out of all the objects they are creating. Uh, to further make the things faster and to further make it easier for developers to write smart contracts, we introduced a set of libraries which they can call at any time by API. Those libraries are written in Go. They are running in native speed. And actually, from the smart contract perspective at the Wasmer, it's like a global Wasmer object. And actually, they are, they are only a map of C pointer functions, which put into Go in a Go code where we can do all the heavy stuff, heavy lifting like signatures with audited cryptograph uh, cryptographic APIs, big mathematics. And we can even eliminate the need for the smart contract developer to work on his magic with memory. We do not even allow it because we use managed buffers. So all your memory is inside Go. It is limited. It's much more easier to keep. And you have to focus on the smart contract part only on the business logic. By doing this, uh, this year we managed to reach from the 10 transactions per second to over 4,000, but in this time, DeFi operations, DeFi transactions, which, were, which are more complex. And uh, it was a, such a great number to reach. This is with an AR, uh, ARM64 build. Intel is a little bit slower, like 10% slower. Uh, but. Uh, uh, that is good enough right now. So 400, four, four, over 4,000 DeFi operations per second, it's like a brand new bench, benchmark for the crypto world, and not even the crypto world, but in the Web2 world. And um, you can have thousands or millions of users actually uh, connected to the, your ecosystem without having a, any of hitch. And as if, and if as we have sharding as well, this is multiplied by the number of shards we have. Our architecture is built in using a lot of templates, interfaces. So any change coming from Wasm and anything we like, uh, we can introduce it in one, two, three days of work. Testing and audit auditing is a little bit longer for that. And that because the, we try to build composable architectures taking out modules, taking out interfaces, connecting them together. The same with smart contracts. We have hundreds of smart contracts which are using separate types of modules. And you can build anything you want based on a few tricks and importing a few modules on, uh, in Rust. Then you have one, the, one of the most important part executed. In sharded environment, we have a lot of uh, problems, blockchain-specific pro problems. But we can implement asynchronous calls, time locks, and promises, which we know from JavaScript, I think, or Java at, at some point. So communication between shards, between, our, uh, we, between apps, is built into the protocol. And the, the smart contract developer doesn't even need to know at all, at all about it. He, he, he only calls interfaces, and everything is built inside a VM. So it was 10 minutes. That's all. Uh, if you are more interested in Multivar 6, web technology, uh, feel free to reach me out. Thank you very much.
I think if somebody has a question, I have like two, three minutes here. Hi. Uh, what would your advice be to someone who wanted to use WebAssembly and had some sort of uh, cryptographic need? Say they were trying to sign some bits or something like that cryptographically. How, how, what, do you, what would your advice be to them, for them? You could actually write code, your cryptographic code, and build into the WASM if you want. But uh, it's better to have like an, an actual something which runs on native speed, and you have audited libraries, and your WASM to actually call that. It's much faster and safer. You don't have to do and pay for all the audits. Cryptography is, in general, you should pay for audit and resolve that part. If that it makes sense. No, it does. I, I just, uh, I think the thing is the user expectation, because you, you can't really, until we get constant time WASM working and, and, uh, and, and get some sort of uh, lib SS, you know, open SSL, boring SSL, actual libraries working. Uh, inside WASM, I, I'm afraid just user expectations um, will be kind of, there'll be a problem with user expectations. People are just going to take their Rust code that uses Rust TLS and just expect it to work, and it won't. Or if it does work, it won't actually be safe. <laughs> yeah, you could take your Rust code and compile it into WASM. I think it will be pretty big if you have to compile everything around it. But uh, uh, actually, it's safer to execute outside of it. I think there are no, no more questions. Thank you very much.